How would the public even here take it with the fact of some hostages, those uh, with U.S. citizen preferred getting, getting that kind of, uh, if, if, if anything like this actually progressed? So on the one hand, we can understand well that anyone would do anything that they possibly can in order to release their loved ones from captivity. It's right. I'll just mention I spoke with John Poland. We'll have the mm -hmm. interview later in the program. Excellent. Where he takes the uh, saying, uh, you know, it's better to have all the hostages released, but we'll take any option we can. Exactly right. And so, and so I'm merely echoing what I think would be the natural sentiments of anybody who has their loved ones in captivity. But while that may be so, Israeli citizens with their loved ones in captivity who do not enjoy the luxury of dual citizenship will be in absolute despair about this. It also opens the door to multiple other countries. America is not the only country whose citizens are inside the Gaza Strip right now under Hamas captivity. Belgium springs to mind. France, Argentina is another one. There are myriad countries. About 50 percent of the hostages have dual citizenship of a number of countries around the world. And the other thing that I think is that one has to think carefully and show some compassion for the repeated phenomenon of family members learning about these things by way of the media. I think that it really does increase the responsibility on the negotiators and the government and the defense establishment to communicate much more clearly with the family members of these hostages. It would be appalling to consider ourselves in such a situation whereby we're hearing of such a rumor by way of the media. Right, and uh, as we're here later, John Poland says that's exactly where he heard of it, and he still knows nothing about this. Of he course, heard it from the media. That's said. correct.